The 76th Cannes Film Festival has announced this year's lineup. That's right, and with names like Martin Scorsese and Todd Haynes on the list, just to name a few, this year's festival will not disappoint. It kicks off next month on May 16th on the French Riviera. Who wouldn't want to be there? Uh, the nearly two-week-long event will feature more than 50 films across a range of genres. For more, let's bring in Eric Cohn. He is the vice president of editorial strategy and executive editor for IndieWire. Uh, Eric, we heard a couple of names. Who else do you think will be the big draws at this year's festival? Well, it's, it's worth looking at what the big draws were from last year's festival to see what the expectations are really like. I mean, last year, Top Gun, Maverick, and Elvis both launched at Cannes and went on to be huge blockbusters, make a lot of money, and then get Oscar nominations as well. So this year, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Uh, this is not directed by Steven Spielberg, but it is the latest and, and highly anticipated, probably final installation of the Indiana Jones franchise. Harrison Ford at the age of 80, still a movie star, will be coming out and getting a special award. You also have The Weeknd, uh, the pop star in a TV series called The Idol, uh, with the showrunner being the same person who created Euphoria, the second biggest HBO show after Game of Thrones. So quite a number of, of big names beyond the obvious. Um, but you, it is still very much canned. So you'll see major directors like Wes Anderson, and even though he's working with Tom Hanks, at Cannes, his film Asteroid City is going to be the big draw even more than Tom Hanks himself. So what's exciting about Cannes really does have to do with the filmmakers first and then the actors second. Yeah, well, I always love Wes Anderson and how he makes those films. Yeah, so the way he shoots, it's like so um, eerie, but like classy. And, you know, Eric, one of the things about the festival, too, you mentioned some big budget films, Top Gun, Indiana Jones now, but it's also known for kind of smaller um, you know, artsy yeah. movies. Um, the, the, the festival itself has been criticized for a lack of diversity. So talk to us about how the organizers um, acknowledge that as well. Yeah, I mean, first of all, it's worth noting that the Cannes Film Festival has its first female president for the first time in, in its nearly 80-year history, right? Wow. So, so there has been changes behind the scenes as well. The competition is the biggest part of Cannes. It's where you can win the Palme d'Or, and uh, only two women in history have won the Palme d'Or before, Jane Campion and Julia Ducourneau. So with six women in competition this year, that's an all-time high, and that might sound, not sound like a lot when they've announced 19 films in competition, but it is progress. Uh, one of those women is Alice Rohrwacher, a major Italian director who was actually just nominated for an Oscar for a short film she directed earlier this year. So you're seeing some um, uh, progress on, on in terms of gender parity that, that is promising, but it's not fully there yet. Um, there's also quite a number of African films throughout the official selection, and Africa as a continent has a, a sort of a burgeoning film industry that could use more of a, a, a international profile and can could give it that this year. Huh. Well, when it, uh, I, I agree with Errol. Like, when I think of Cannes, I think of the Palme d'Or being awarded to some of these films that you wouldn't necessarily otherwise go to yeah. see. I'm wondering, uh, along that same vein, what are you most excited to see this year? And who do you think might actually uh, be deserving of the Palme d'Or? Well, the, the president of the jury this year is Ruben Ostlund, who won the Palme d'Or last year for Triangle of Sadness, a completely wild Crazy film. Errol yeah, and I have talked, talked about, about that so that much. <laughs> Sorry, Eric. Go on. If you think about what, what's great about that is a movie that's that crazy and, and fun and memorable, the person who made that is going to be giving out the Palme d'Or this year. So it's kind of fun to imagine how that might impact things. I mean, I'm excited for, for the really off the wall stuff. There's a new film from Jonathan Glazer, a British director who last made Under the Skin quite a few years ago with Scarlett Johansson. And he's got this film about a Nazi officer who falls in love with someone at Auschwitz, which just sounds really, wow. you know, subversive and, 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 and daring. There's a Finnish director, Aki Karismaki, who always makes these really beautiful kind of slapstick comedies with a kind of social message to them. So these are the kind of movies that I get really excited about uh, because they're fun to write home about when you're there. And we don't have in the U.S. the same kind of film culture that they have in France. So you hope that Cannes can have enough of an impact where there's some enthusiasm back home and, and people do want to see these movies. And it's never a problem hanging out on the French Riviera. Yeah, not a bad place to be. Eric, I hope you make it there at some point. Uh, thanks for speaking with us, being with us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.